Hi, I'm Carol Allen with loveisinthestars.com and today I wanted to share with you a little something uh, about marriage. And this can help you decide if you should marry someone. This can help you stay the course in terms of keeping a relationship going well. And this can help you decide if you should stay married to someone. So I like to call this the four legs of the marital bed. And this of course is a metaphor. So think of it like a marital bed or a marriage rather uh, is really four things. The first thing and the most important of the four. So one of the legs of the bed is friendship. Are you friends? with one another. Can you tell them anything? Can you feel supported? Do you feel like they want the best for you and you want the best for them, independent of how it affects them or how it affects you? That's the most important thing is, are you friends? The number one leg is it's a friendship, but all of them really, in terms of the stability of the situation, all of them matter and create the stability. So number two, is the romance and the sex life, right? Is there a romantic aspect to the relationship and does it work for both people? And is it strong enough? And the thing of it is a, a romantic relationship, whether it's a boyfriend and a girlfriend, whether you live with someone, whether you're married, the romance part is the part that makes it different from every other relationship or friendship, right? It's what makes it more magical, gives it a little more fairy dust. <laughs> and the hope is that this lasts and really acts as the glue uh, in the relationship. And is because this part of a relationship is extremely bonding, right? Uh, so that's the second leg of the marital bed. The third leg, is when you marry someone, and even when you live with someone, and you could argue you can have this without those things, but especially when you marry someone and you live with someone, you become each other's family. So you're not just partners, and you're not just cohabitating, you're really each other's family. And what's so interesting in marriage you know, Freud would say you marry people like your parents, right? Or your primary caregivers. The Harville Hendricks and Helen Hendricks Institute also says that, that we're drawn to people like our early caretakers who sort of reactivate for us all those feelings we had as babies and children, right? Well, the other crazy thing that happens is you kind of switch roles even in a day, even in an hour where you're kind of like siblings, but then you're also parental with one another and then you might be childlike with one another. Uh, it's funny, little sidebar. My husband comes from a family of boys. So he grew up with brothers. I grew up with sisters. By the way, that's not recommended. <laughs> uh, because, you know, when you grew up with sisters and you're a girl, you only know how to relate to girls. When you grew up with brothers and you're a boy, you only know how to relate to boys. But anyway, every once in a while, my husband will act like I'm his little brother, you know, he'll like, I, I mean, I won't go into it. But in a nutshell, sometimes I'm, I have to say to him, hello, I'm your wife. <laughs> but it's cute. It's sweet. Anyway, so you become each other's family. And so often you'll have, you know, family dynamics with one another that are similar to what you grew up with or remind you of what you grew up with. And, uh, and again, this is a deeper connection than just friendship and even more than sex and romance, quite honestly, because, you know, as the saying goes, blood is thicker than water. This makes you as though you're related, right? So it's very, very powerful. And the hope is that you create a family together, whether it's with your own children or your fur babies, as my husband and I have done, or it's with your chosen family of 
nearest and dearest, right? Loved ones that are friends or neighbors or whoever. Okay, so the fourth leg of the stool, and this is especially if you get married, but also if you live with someone, and you could argue if you're just dating, is you're really business partners. And by business, I mean the business of living, right? So handling things like your schedule together, your calendar, handling your daily tasks that need taken care of, like how are you gonna eat? Who's gonna clean up? Who's gonna pay the bills? Uh, how much are you gonna help one another, do things to support each other, do things to support mutual goals? So if you are married, legally, you're business partners, right? You're responsible for each other's debts. Uh, I mean, if any of us actually read the legalese of marriage, nobody would ever get married. <laughs> it's this huge, scary thing to say that you will be responsible for another person's, you know, financial life, uh, their taxes, their, you know, behavior in the world. So, so of course, all four of these issues are things people fight about like crazy or aren't happy with in relationships or wish were better. I think we could generalize that it's quite common for women to want romance, especially, right? Uh, especially in the early years. Uh, and it's quite common for, you know, people to really, really have very intense feelings about family. <laughs> and they say actually the number two reason couples fight after differences in financial lifestyle habits or approaches to money or earning. The number two reason people argue is uh, differences in parenting. And then of course there's challenges with in-laws can be a big deal. So family stuff can be extremely emotional and full of landmines for, for couples. Uh, but all of these really matter. So you want to ask yourself again, when you're trying to decide, you know, is this the person for me? Is this the person I want to spend forever with? One of the things you want to ask yourself is how good are these four areas? Is this person my friend? Is this person my lover, my beloved? Do I feel cherished by this person? Do I feel desired? by this person? Am I attracted to them enough, right? I mean, if you're, if you're putting a ring on it, you better be really attracted <laughs> because that chemistry would better last. And if you're in a traditional kind of marriage, it's sort of like that's the only restaurant you can eat at, right? Uh, so uh, you don't want to, you don't want to think the food is just okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, do you want, do you feel like family? Does this person feel like your ride or die where even if you want to kill them sometimes, even if they drive you nuts, even if you drive them nuts, you can't quit each other because, because you're really family. And then fourth, you know, how's the business of living going? Is one of you doing everything, which is very common, I hate to say. Is one of you paying for everything, which is also happens a lot. Uh, I really can talk. It's just a little late, so forgive me. <laughs> I'm conjugating my sentences incorrectly. But anyway, these are all four very important. They all need communication. They all require maintenance. And uh, sometimes they all need a little support. So if you could use some support or if you want clarity in these areas, astrology can be incredibly helpful, especially Vedic astrology, which has insights into relationships that are mind blowing. Uh, and then coaching can be really helpful too, because there's so many facets to all of these issues. And there's just so much incredible research on all this stuff. And uh, there's just so much we could dive in and so many subcategories we could create within each, right? Uh, so anyway, you can find all my favorite tricks and tips at loveisinthestars.com. I have reports there to help you determine through astrology if these things can be fulfilled. There are actually compatibility techniques 
uh, that are ancient, that are how they arrange marriages in India, that can show quite a bit of this without you even having to ever talk to someone. So, uh, so anyway, I am here for you. I would love to connect with you. You can subscribe to my newsletter at loveisinthestars.com and learn all about all of this. Uh, and I'll keep making videos. So please subscribe here. And I hope, hope, hope that you are either in or will find your true, happy, four-legged marital bed because without four legs, it's gonna fall over, right? Uh, and I can't wait to share more fun things next time. So take good care. Bye. God bless.